Okay, now let's look at an actual example of uh, when you might use stacks. We're going to use stacks for handling parentheses in the first example and actually anything that balances out. Uh, there's a lot of languages that use parentheses. There's even a language that uses so many parentheses that has gotten famous for it called Lisp. Uh, it used to be a favorite language to teach at uh, Berkeley. So you'll see this is actually something defined in Lisp. It's actually defining a new function called square. And you notice it has parentheses on the outside. It has parentheses around a parameter. It has parentheses around the body of the method. So it uses everything as parentheses. Uh, so Lisp just has a huge number of parentheses. Languages that use parentheses must have them balanced in a way uh, that also holds true for a lot of computer languages and uh, symbols. So example in uh, Java and C++ we use uh, cur curly braces, square brackets. In HTML you use tags that match each other. Uh, in XML and HNL you have tags have matching uh, less than and greater than angle brackets that surround the name of the tag. So you see this show up in a lot of places. Uh, let's just look at how they're balanced here. So when you balance parentheses, every time you have an opening parentheses on the far side you'll have a closing parentheses. So you'll have one that matches. Uh, here's an opening parentheses and here's one that closes it. Uh, here's an opening parentheses, one that closes it, and so on. Uh, if you have a series of open parentheses, you're going to have a series of matching closing parentheses so that the the first one matches the last one that opened it. The next uh, the next closing one matches the next uh, going backwards uh, opening one and so on. And you can see this one gets more complex. Uh, we're going to see there's a pattern here for stacks in that if you if you look at closing parentheses and keep track I have two closing parentheses uh, then if you can see a, a right-hand parentheses, you can basically forget that you have two and just go back to one and so on. So uh, there's a pattern here. Uh, these are examples of parentheses that do not balance. So here you start with a closing parentheses without ever opening a parentheses. Here you have an opening parentheses, but then you have three closing parentheses. So those are obvious. This one's not so obvious. Uh, it's balanced up to here, but then there's a two opening parentheses but only one closing parentheses so it gets out of balance. So stacks end up to being really good for this because the way the pattern works uh, is the matching parentheses will always appear last for an opening parentheses. So if you have several openings uh, you're going to be closing the inner ones and working backwards to find the matching open ones. So the order of the closing is opposite of the order of the opening. So it states that here closing symbols match opening symbols in the reverse order of their appearance. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you some pseudocode uh, for what, how we're going to solve this. So uh, we're going to create a stack. So we're going to use our abstract data type. We're going to uh, have a, a loop that goes through every symbol of a string and basically we're going to write a function that you give it a string it just returns true or false. So this is how we'll do it. So this loop will go through every symbol of the string. If the symbol is an opening parentheses we're going to push it on the stack. If it's a closing parentheses which is the else condition uh, then if the stack is empty uh, that means we have something on the stack or we have nothing on the stack uh, but we just found a closing parentheses so we returned false. We're out of balance. Uh, if we just have a closing parentheses uh, and, and the stack has the thing on it, we pop the stack because that's going to be the matching opening parentheses. When we're done with the loop, we've gone through all the symbols, we better have stopped, popped everything off the stack to be perfectly balanced. So when we're done scanning and the stack is empty, we return true, but there's still something on the stack, we return false. So let's look at the code for actually doing this. Now this code you can just copy out of the book uh, and paste it into Pythons. Uh, to use the Pythons library, one way you can do it is move it directly into here. And right now it doesn't have it, so if you don't have the Pythons library, let me run it and I'll show you what happens. So you get this error. 
and you'll see there's no module named Pythons. So to get the library, I'm going to go to my browser, and you'll see under the textbook resources, you go here, there at the bottom here, you'll see Pythons. So you click here to download it. And it's a zip file, so for the operating system on, you unzip it. And I'm going to go to here, and I actually have it unzipped from before. It's, uh, uh, well, let's unzip it. Fresh. Store by name. So it's just called Pythons. There it is. So then you move your window so you can see, uh, and I'm going to switch back to PY Charm. So what you do is one way you can do it is you just drag this into your project folder. So you have this Pythons folder in the same folder you have your running file. This is one way you can access modules. So it just verifies here. I'm going to hit OK and hit OK on this about locking files. And then you'll see it, the folder show up here. Once I've done that, these errors went away. And if I run it, it actually runs without any problems. And there's some code here that just checks two sets of parentheses. Now, the other place you can get it, you can put it, just to show you, is this is the location here for the external libraries, and it tells you where that location is. On my Mac, it's, it's, in all, it's in a folder way down in this stuff. So you can actually find the folder that this lists and drop it into that folder. And because it, it searches that location for libraries, so you'd actually drop it in the Python 3.4. If you're on Windows and you've installed Python, this folder is very simple. It's just go to the C drive, and if you if you installed it in the default place, there would be a folder called Python 3.4. Just put Python's folder inside of that folder. So that's another one. And that'll make it available for any future projects so you don't have to move it into your new projects. Okay, so now let's actually look at this code. So this implements the pseudocode. Uh, it uses a few techniques. So it defines a, a, a method here. It takes a string. It's going to return true or false. Uh, it makes a brand new stack. It has a flag and an index. The flag will keep track if it's balanced. Uh, the index is set initially to true, I mean to zero. And then they're going to increment the index through to point to each character in the string. So in this loop that's going to go through each character, it loops as long as it's balanced. Uh, so they use that to exit early. Now they set the symbol to the next thing in the string. If the symbol is a left parenthesis, they push it on the stack. Else, it's going to be a right parenthesis. So that's going to, I'll add a little comment here. Just like they have. So you'll see the else condition handles the right parenthesis. And so if the stack is empty, they now need to exit and they know it's not balanced. So they set balanced equal to false. Now this is how this author likes to do things. He likes to exit his loops with a flag. I like to just say return. It does the same thing and you, then you don't need the flag. Um, so, But I have to fix it a lot of places so I'm going to go back to the way the author did it. Uh, so if it's empty you're not balanced, otherwise you just pop the left parentheses that match the closing parentheses you just saw. You increment the index for the loop, and then you go back to while. So that's going to loop through the whole string, and when you're done with the string, you have to see if it's empty or not. So if the string, if the stack is empty here after you've got reached the end of the string, you have a balanced situation. And you also want to check balance here, because if you do his, you have to check this flag and uh, if, it, if it's already not balanced, you don't want to, uh, you want to go immediately to false. So if it's, uh, if it's not empty, you return false because there's going to be an opening the parentheses that was never matched. And then there's just a couple lines that check this. Now I was showing that, that you can check it easily by using assert statements. So you say assert, this returns true or false. You expect this one to be true. 
And even though assert checks for true or false, I'm going to say equal true. Uh, and then you can give a message uh, failed test. Or you cannot give a message. If you don't give a message on assert, it'll give you a, a standard message. And in fact, just showing the line might be adequate. So then I'll say assert here. Uh, this is equal to true. Oh, this one's supposed to be false because it's not balanced. And then we have to remove the print. I forgot to do that. That prints that. There we go. So uh, I prefer for testing my programs that I write assert statements. And they have the advantage and they only cause something to happen if they fail. And because they don't do anything when you're done, uh, you can actually print uh, code succeeded. So, or something like that. Pass test. So let's run this. I have a little problem here. What's it saying? Statement. Uh, end of statement expected. Uh, so I seem to be missing something. Well, let's run it and see what it says. Uh, it says invalid syntax. Oh, I have an extra parentheses. Looks like here. That was the one for the print. Let me run it. And uh, code succeed. Oh, I have to put that in parentheses because we're not in the old version of Python. And then we run it. And now what's oh print? That should be a little p. There we go, code succeeded. So it runs. So let's look at a more general problem next. So this is, uh, the last thing we'll show you is, is um, balancing a lot of parentheses. So let's suppose you're doing a real program and you have stripped out all the code except for the types of parentheses, which are gonna be uh, parentheses, angle brackets, or, and uh, uh, square brackets. So, so what we're going to do is whenever we push, we're going to push the actual symbol. So if we detect any of these, we push that symbol. When we pop, we want to verify that the closing symbol matches the one that's on top of the stack. That's all we have to do. So let's look at that code. This is also in the book, so you can just import it. And I put it in the same project, and we've already in imported Pythons. So the first thing you'll see different is it says, is symbol in this list of symbols? So it's checking for any of the closing parentheses. If you had other types of matching symbols, you could add it here. It pushes the symbol. Else, uh, if the stack's empty, uh, so you remember this, else means you've detected uh, a closing symbol. Okay, and it likes two spaces before a comment. There we go. Uh, so if S is empty, that means it's not balanced, it sets it to false. Otherwise, it's found a closing symbol. We pop the closing symbol from the top of the stack, and it better match the, uh, the symbol that we just saw. So if not matches top to symbol, uh, so what does matches do? Let's see. Matches is defined open and close. So it checks what is the top symbol. Uh, open the closers, so it gets the uh, it gets the index of where it finds the open symbol uh, out of this array, and then it, so it's searching for where that is, and then it's searching for the closing symbol and getting that index, and the two indexes must match between these. So that's a little tricky thing. So this is a special thing to check if the same symbol occurs here and here, the match versus the close, and if it's not matched, it sets balance to false. Then it uh, loops, so it's going to loop through all the things. When it's all done, if the stack is empty, it's going to return true. Everything's kosher. Otherwise, it's, if it's not empty or it wasn't balanced in the loop, it's going to return false. And that's it. That's the general case.